Yeah. 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 All set. So, Good. Renato, you are the. Um, uh, we're excited to finally get to, to see you. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, obviously we've been on this journey in the, in the international platform together on the, the uh, kind of looking at urban design and architectural design within an urban network beyond sort of typical ideas of, of resilience. Um, mm -hmm. I want to point out to, to the readers eventually, because this interview will be in a book, um, that mm -hmm. un unlike the other uh, participants across, across the globe, yours, I think, is the only um, undergraduate representation. It is, yeah. If I'm not, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Yes, okay. it is. And, and, and uh, unlike the others who almost all of the participants, let's say, took, took a kind of a, a, de a design first agenda, you, 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 mm. you did something else. And, I, and, and I'd love for you to summarize that. And then maybe we could just have a kind of uh, a few Q&A from Ga Garrett, and you and, and me to talk about this process and what you've learned and what's unfolded. It's yeah, okay. sure. Yeah, well, it's kind of unusual, but what we do here in the undergraduate uh, program is that we try to introduce the students to a first experience of research. And even though our original plan was actually to do this in the graduate uh, master's program that we have, eventually it landed in the undergrad, but we found it to be relatively fit since we actually try and do research with the younger students who, well, are maybe not so um, trained, if you will, but they have a fresh eye. And this was quite, I think, um, notorious in the studio we did. What we intended to do was to do a cross section of the uh, Valley of Santiago. You know, Chile is a long, narrow, strip of land with many valleys north to south, you know, between the Andes and the sea. And so we did a cross section across the rivers and tried to, I mean, following the river that comes down the Maipo River um, across the valley, and tried to then understand the differences in this cross section to guide the students into this research experience in understanding what are the, uh, um, well, the hazards and the um, sort of the context and the possibilities and the mechanisms of resilience. As you know, we have very often many kinds of, of hazards and disasters, and it's rather we, we, we have labeled Chile a multi-hazard land, and that is very clear, I would say, in general. So it's in this sort of umbrella that we brought the students to um, follow the, the sort of logic of this valley from the mountain to the sea. So if, if you will, that is a summary of what we try to do in this semester. Great, thank you. Um, so as you describe it, I'm thinking, of, I'm thinking of the sort of expanded field, if you will, of the architect's uh, practice. And mm -hmm. she, the architect's practice, she would <laughs> not only be working on plans, but she would be working as a geographer, as a as a scout, as some kind of um, um, uh, frontier mapper. Is that is, is is would would you say that your students embarked on atypical uh, uh, um, research in terms of uh, design, in that they well, were sniffing out things in a different way? Well, we see, the, we see research as a part of design in the sense that you need to shape and find the problem with, before you solve it, right? So what mm -hmm. we are doing in this kind of seminar is to um, understand the, the kind of issue that we're facing and we try to give form to this, to this um, problem in not literally in a built form or in a plan form, but rather uh, in a, in a half abstract, half concrete way of documenting it and, and understanding it. You could label it, um, yes, also um, unconventional in, in certain ways, because we do not do in the field of architecture actual, you know, scientific research with all the <clears throat> canons, even though we try to organize it and structure it. But the students are 
already trained in design. So they more or less know what they would eventually find should it come to be a design that these problems uh, lead to. You know? uh, so I would say these are problem finders. So they are, yes, you know, sneaking out uh, and trying to uh, identify and, and configure um, a problem in particular that they need to boil down to a specific question and, and elaborate it with, uh, you know, data or firsthand information, et cetera, et cetera, always leading towards a project in that we are architects, you know, in this, in this schools, we do not train planners properly. You know, we have a different institute for that, but these architects are eventually going to land in, uh, in, in, in design. They actually don't do it in this semester, but this is where we are leading them. You know, we want them to be better informed and problematized so that they can actually eventually solve. So we hope that this learning, even if it sounds maybe abstract to relative to the case and the problem at hand, but still is uh, I think what is most uh, important in this uh, learning process. No, that makes perfect sense. I'm, th I'm thinking of the, of the professional term here that um, probably you have a similar term, if not the same of programming. <laughs> That, uh -huh. that, that you, you right. can't, you, you can't, you know, it's essentially, yeah, to, you could. it's, the, you know, you've got to design the brief and to design the brief, you've got to gather the data and analyze and, and kind of, um, uh, what's the word, uh, the medical world word, you know, what are the symptoms so that you can, you know, give the prescription. Right. You know? More or less. Yeah. yeah. That's the spirit. That, that makes, that makes sense. <laughs> I was, um, a, a similar question, slightly different way of asking it, perhaps, is, mm -hmm. you know, I, in looking at the work and hearing you describe uh, the path you set out for your students, I was reminded yeah. of a, a, a landscape architect that we work with, who also Mohammed knows. Uh, we had Julie Bargman come to our um, of Dirt Studio, uh, mm -hmm. come to our um, uh, our studio last year, and. She, she fascinating woman who's, let's say, obsessed with uh, land, um, the way land works before a building arrives at the site, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Architects were always kind of X marks the spot and students, mm -hmm. here's the spot and you you run with it. And, mm -hmm. you know, Julie is very fond of saying, uh, you know, maybe there are times when the architect shouldn't act or shouldn't yeah. intervene. And, and not to say that your studio would approach that, but was there something in the research, right? When you talk about this cross section of the valley and mm -hmm. all the work was done on it, were you mm -hmm. able to say, maybe ask this question, where architects should act and where shouldn't they act? Mm -hmm. And you know, was any light brought to that um, you know, related to resilience, climate change, um, uh, heavy footprint, light footprint, you know, Mm -hmm. You know, d did anything like that pop up? Maybe architects shouldn't act everywhere, but act in a selective way. Yeah, well, you know, in, in this country, in this city too, uh, there's no way around landscape. It's like everywhere, you know, it's coming so out from all sides. Yes, yeah. right, exactly. So we live in this valley that is completely surrounded. And one of these sides is the Andes and there's 6,000 meters high, you know, the Aconcagua is not directly on the valley, but the heights are very, you know, strong and they're always present since you're a child. So when, yes, indeed, when you as an architect try and organize a program as Mohammed was saying, uh, to, to address a design, there's no way around this sort of articulation with landscape. And I think this was more or less what we were thinking about when we brought them along the river basin, you know, the specific river, river across the valley. The valley is very wide. You know, it's sort of a big, big valley that is home of 7 million people. So it's not a small valley, but, uh, but still, um, it is, as I say, part of what you um, sort of ask first. So how, how much should we intervene? We didn't really address the, the possibility of not intervening because we were not really going for an intervention mm. per se. Uh, 
So that that was not um, sort of a, a question, but we, uh, if it had it been a, um, a project, a design project, yes, it would have been a, a question in many mm. cases, because in 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 many of these um, sort of um, studies that the students conduct uh, students conducted you could see that uh, studying the, uh, the 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 context you could see that in many cases you would find that what we do as a city development or as a architecture objects you know etc tend to interfere what with what is the natural sort of course of things in the valley you know as in the as in the um um, landslide areas and so they are of course protected or designated as dangerous or, or such but they are not really <clears throat> so carefully respected in that regard so you find in many cases this sort of overlapping of, of misfit decisions of design that really teach a lot for the students exactly in that direction that maybe you should be careful where not to uh, step on and um, elaborate a better you know integrated or more perceptive strategy to actually go with these uh, sort of forces of nature so you see this in many ways when it comes to water coming down from the mountains when you go along the the, the plain of the valley that eventually floods you know, in, in naturally in several areas, or you see it also in the air pollution. You probably saw one of the works doing um, a very interesting research with um, heat um, islands in, in the west of the city that are managed somehow by the city administration with a very interesting uh, local program for uh, watering the parks, et cetera, et cetera. That was quite a discovery of our students. And further on, you know, in the more rural areas towards the sea, you can also find these sort of um, areas of, um, you know, uh, distress where uh, these um, trends are actually being sort of step by development in, in its several forms. It's not always so urban, but there's also a kind of a suburban development here that is a legal scheme for you to have relatively small mm. patches of land so that you can have your little weekend house, et cetera, et cetera. And then all the way to the sea, at the, uh, you know, the, um, I don't know if you call it the mouth of the river, you know, the, uh, the, mm -hmm. um, the place where it comes to the sea that is usually, quite uh, heavily uh, inhabited by trees. And at the same time, it's a, a space for on the one side, a huge port, the most important port in Santiago on the other side, a very sort of um, um, elegant sort of weekend um, houses town. So all these sort of um, conflicts we, we did see, and I think we did learn we didn't come to a point to say, oh, well, I will not intervene. But I think this was implicit in that uh, these um, discoveries were being made. Um, that phrase you just said, uh, not so urban. I'm just, <laughs> um, I think when Garrett and I were looking through the, through the booklets that, that you provided, the sort of the, 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 the capstone projects, mm -hmm. Which of course my Spanish is next really not good, so it was quite difficult. But but the imagery was, was um, helped a lot. Um, I was thinking could, the, the the students I imagine would have been in in sort of unfamiliar territory. I imagine the students to be urbanites in certain areas. They're kind of going out outside of the city. Is that is that correct? Mm, to a certain degree, yes, certain but there were students who are actually not from Santiago. I'm one of them from... was actually living in Melipilla, one of the towns that was along the way, and he was actually sitting in his own hometown and doing the research with us and finding for himself, uh, for himself, you know, things that he didn't really know about uh, his own town. What? But what? but yes, there's there is a certain... Um, of course, uh, sort of opening that these experiences bring to the students who are well young people. They don't don't really have the very 
broadest experience and many have been yeah well live it, living in a relatively limited areas of a city and so what is strong here as you probably know is that we have sort of very very strong spatial segregation among social groups so there's a well-to-dos who live in an area up to the mountains and there's a not so well-to-do three quarters of the city that lives in the rest of the sort of um, pie you know mm. and and so there is a tendency of our students to be in this quarter of the better uh, uh, better fortunate and uh, and many of them haven't really had you know the chance of living an experience around the city they probably been to miami but not to right, the rest right. of santiago you know right, right. so um, this is in in that sense yes an opening for them i'm sure and i think that looking at this uh, sort of uh, complete perspective also is kind of a discovery also for us i would say that you mm not necessarily always have the, the the perspective as i said these are right. enclosed valleys that you can see two or three before you get to the sea so it's not that you really have the idea well this is the river that flows mm -hmm. down in that mm -hmm. creek and then ends up in that mouth every, uh, elsewhere so th there is a kind of a experience in in learning from the own territory and the the ways that is inhabited more urban less urban um alike yeah, no, these, I mean, I, I think it's, 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 it's great pedagogy to, to, to put, to put people out in the world and encounter, encounter the stranger and essentially, you know, create new, new horizons of, of understanding. Mm -hmm. I, I'm mm -hmm. interested in what were the methodologies of, um, of, uh, you know, um, the fact finding method methodologies, what, what, were they interview based, were they video based, what, what, how did they go about that? Well, there's one basic thing that is, you know, stepping into the liquid. You know, you do, you, here's a problem, good luck. Of course, there's a, there's a secret sort of understructure that we try to provide, but this tends to be more sort of abstract into um, problem identification, question making, you know, and hypotheses and, and the like. And, and what we do try to um, uh, underline, you know, to really enforce is that the students use tools of the trade so that they draw, you know, that they map, that they, if, if they can make a photograph, uh, an actual architectural, you know, instrument, then photograph is good, then video is good, but they, they should deal with problems the way an architect does so that it remains in the field of architecture and it doesn't sort of derive to the field of sort of sociology because you're doing interviews or history because you're looking at an archive. So all these things are good, but eventually they need to be sort of um, summarized, you know, um, in synthesized in, in maps, you know, plans. If you want them historical, good but then there should be plans, not sort mm -hmm. of narratives. So that we try to, to reinforce in the, in the, as a method, as a sort of general thing. But we do um, also, we try to support that the students find their own sort of area of comfort where they, they feel that these tools are working with them. So we don't really press them into one particular thing or the other. I, I think, you know, one question I had that I would be um, really interested to hear you elaborate on related to resilience is, you know, you know we've now we've spoken with, uh, you know, people from Tokyo, right? People from, mm -hmm. uh, people from all different sort of geographic um, and geological uh, conditions. You know, we, you speak about the valley. We, we hear it about this sort of cross section from the mountain to the sea, um, mm -hmm. the Andes as a backdrop, um, and you know, you even you mentioned landslides, right? And I yeah. think I think something that would be I think kind of uh, really interesting to hear about related to the students' work is. You know, in Tokyo, we're dealing with a different type of resilience. Let's say, you know, mm -hmm. related to 
a, a major storm event uh, runoff and infiltration uh, into a densely urban uh, populated area. So, so you know, and I, I'm I'm kind of drawn to this landslide example. Like, what are the peculiarities and the 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 super local uh, read of resilience and the effects uh, there? And 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 did any of that was that all sort of pre-known or did, were you discovering things through the research? Uh, um, you know, almost as a crystal ball looking into the future, things that we need to uh, address that we haven't quite thought of yet. Um, mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I wonder if you speak to the specific geology, geography, uh, catastrophe, disaster related scenarios mm -hmm. that are specific to, to, to your research. Yeah, well, the... Um... There, there are very, there are several specific sort of uh, uh, hazards and and uh, resilience sort of uh, demands or strategies um, related to our country. One of these is yes, landslides on the on the, from the Andes. This was um, what what we were documenting in that case was a landslide that happened in '93. It was very very um, sort of. Uh, how to say, public, and it made a big impact because it was not so very much in the radar. What is generally in our radar is earthquakes. So we have earthquakes mm -hmm. literally every day, as you, well you do in California too. And every sort of 20, 25 years, we have one major earthquake per zone of the country, right? So in your lifetime, you live four or five major earthquakes, the last one, 8.8. .8. So this is sort of in everyone's sort of uh, chip, you know, built in. Mm. Everyone knows about it. Then we have flooding in, in, the, um, in the valley, which is less and less often because, uh, well, the country is undergoing a big sort of uh, dry period of, you know, 10 to 12 years already. You call that a a draft, draft. Oh, draft. draft. Okay, yeah. good. And then, and then all the way to the sea, you find we, we discovered even those we have every hundred years that we also have tsunamis. So this is why I'm saying we ha we are this multi hazard land. And I think what what we um, hmm. in in common we followed is this idea of underlying underlying risk drivers, meaning that. Uh, the perspective, you know, the, the specific events are very clear and there is a very sort of uh, strong capacity of organization and response. There is an, and there are things that are relatively well done. You know, we have a very strong building code, etc. But then what we tend to do is uh, that we tend to react very well and then forget very quickly. So this time span between events is what we try to understand in this case. So it was not so much about following the earthquakes, with, which Roberto and I, we have done in the past. You know, we've been, you know, campaigning after earthquakes around the world, Haiti, Italy, et cetera, et cetera, and in the country too. Uh, but then in, in this case, what we were trying to emphasize is that what you can actually do best is to work between in this period between the events, which is when you can actually settle a better scenario for, for, for the next event to come. And what in particular, I say there's four or five and maybe there will come fires later on. We've had fires related to the drought late, uh, lately too, uh, more and more, which you also have and in Australia they also have. So this is, I would say uh, this sort of um, structure that is ready for whatever is more what we what we tend to see, uh, and uh, and I think we have a good, as I say, a good history and learning. We have a sort of a knowledge that is shared and public and commonsensical for 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 addressing this. We also have professional knowledge, as I say. Uh, in, for instance, uh, in the building code built in, you know, all, and, and good 
professional and commercial practices. You know, people don't steal the cement in the mix so that they can spare a little money. They know that an earthquake will come and they do it the best mm -hmm. they, they can. And this you can see, you know, that things really work. And well, they are maybe not so thin and light and beautiful, but but they they do work. And and so this this sort of um, culture is, I think, what we could see in the, in these cases. You could in, in each one of them, you could somehow follow that um, that sort of learning and continuity of the processes, because you could un understand and see that people are actually to a certain degree prepared or we are more or less used to it, if you will, maybe not prepared, but used to it. And we do have a, a little toolkit for that. And well, we need to make it grow. You know, We need to learn more and more and be more and more ready. So um, I don't know, maybe that's not so specific <laughs> in the end, but, uh, but I, I think that that does characterize the, the, the kind of, approach that I would name more sort of Chilean. Yeah, that, that's fascinating. <clears throat> and I, I, I'm particularly drawn to this idea of, let's say, um, you know, again, across, you know, Japan, all the different areas, uh, studios we've talked to, there, there's also just a cultural difference in the way all of these are addressed, right? And of course, we think of our, uh, I'm from New York, living in Los Angeles. We think of our sort of American uh, reactions and behaviors to dealing with uh, these events, climate change, um, resilience, and uh, you know, it's rather resistive here. <laughs> I would say, mm -hmm. right? We, uh, mm -hmm. we, um, uh, but it, I, so what I'm getting at is this idea that um, the time between events, right, mm -hmm. and like th that seems like really interesting and really important and not and mm. to do the work <laughs> mm -hmm. between exactly. events yeah exactly yeah yeah renato um was there any any um research outcome that that surprised you that that was that you sort of hadn't you know anticipated um well yes that I was telling you about this, this um, student who found, um, went down on a very specific, a specific local scale. I think more or less what, from what we were discussing a minute ago, it was more or less implicit in our sort of hypothesis, the idea that these things uh, social and natural articulate more or less is the idea of resilience in a way, you know, when it comes to human settlements but but i was surprised to see how sensitive students are to go to very sort of local day-to-day -day sort of issues that maybe are totally unsurprising themselves and in in this particular case this student working with uh, urban heat islands she was interested in in the role that uh public parks could have in you know reducing the perception of heat in the open space, which is, you know, less studied here. I don't know if it is probably better studied in the States, but we we have a you know sort of a vague idea of what this is. And there are geographers who studied in the big scale, you know, meteorologists and, and the like. But uh, but uh, following um sort of a map of urban heat island in Santiago, she identified a particular neighborhood and went there and tried to assess the, um, the, the tools and resources that they could have at a local level to deal with this in a very sort of daily basis, you know, watering the park and, you know, having the trees grow instead of drying, you know, our climate naturally is rather dry. It's like California in a way, you know? So, um, and then she, found that there was this very particular structure of uh, specific water companies that were working there and delivering water for the city of uh, the municipality, the local municipality, which is very unusual because we have a, 
actually in Santiago we have one big fat company that provides water, but they in particular, because it was a different town that was eventually integrated in the city, they had their own. And they worked on a very different basis when it comes to water provision and distribution and networks and um, um, tariffs, et cetera, you know? So there are then these things that you, you foresee in an abstract, abstract way that actually take place. Uh, and then, well, when with a sensitive eye, some of them actually did pick up and, and, and documented in a sensitive way. If that eventually could become a project, maybe it's less, mm -hmm. less clear. But the way that these problems were narrowed down to the specificities of this local thing and ceased to be a general idea of this sort of big bubble of heat hanging on our heads mm -hmm. was quite interesting because it, it implied a form of resilience or mechanisms that could be deployed towards, you know, reducing overheating, et cetera, et cetera, or at least making more inhabitable public spaces. So it, um, yes, it, I could make you this narrative for maybe two or three more of these cases, but that particular one was a bit less expected, trying to follow <laughs> the question. That, that, that's, um, that's wonderful to hear, and, and it's such a, um, such a, a great reminder of, of how important it, 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 it's always baffling to me but but how how architecture students are, are seem desensitized from their surroundings and really? and probably probably the last people to to look and see as Le Corbusier said because they're busy in their headspace and looking at a looking at a laptop screen and kind of getting their work done, and and this okay. this business of actually getting the boots on the street, uh, the uh, understanding what a heat island is and what are you know uh, that it could be you know alleviated by a park. This kind of in, inter the sort of the relational aspect of 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 being urban and contributing to the urban. I think mm -hmm. you can only get it by being immersed, by getting a little bit lost, by mm -hmm. connecting some dots that you. That are that, that are so in front of you that you see through them. So I, I really do think that this 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 idea of sending uh, designers out for a significant amount of time into the world to formulate a proposition seems like the the most ethical uh, way to prepare if you're going to participate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I would very much agree. Yeah, I would very much agree. Yeah, we we we've been we've been uh, Garrett and I. We tried to take our students for walks in the city, and I think probably mm. yes, it's a generation that's, that's in a way spoilt uh, for visual oh. stimu visual stimulation. So the mm. idea of being there or going there seems like such a chore, mm. right? You know, I'm 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 generalizing, but mm. but I I think that that what you've described typically. In, in you know up here in North America, um, doesn't happen much in architecture schools. It tends to happen in planning schools. Hmm. It tends to happen in uh, uh, social geography schools. Uh, you know other other spatial practices, uh, but not the you know not the not the mo not the mother of, of of the arts, which seems so wrong. Well. Uh I'm, I'm not so sure. I, I don't think our students are spoiled. And, well, and I hear this all every day. I hear this every day that people think, I introduced to you, Ro Professor Roberto Moris. Hey, Roberto, good see, to see you. You're, you're, can... with my, you're with the, the, wonderful to see you after such a, a period. And my, my good friend and colleague, Garrett Ricciardi is with me here. His video is not working. Hi, Roberto. <laughs> nice to meet you. Sorry, but I don't know if it's, uh, Renato told you that we are in the graduation. Yeah, graduation. Yeah. Hey, congratulations for ending the school year. Well done. <laughs> yeah. It's not bad. <laughs> yeah. It's I hope it's, a, it's an it's early night. Because we had three different years at the same time, because 
is the people from 2019 because we have the the social unrest and pandemia and now. Thank you. That's right. You had social before pandemia. <laughs> was there a lot of hand, was there a lot of handshaking? No. No. Actually, no, without, without cocktail. Without, without cocktail. Kind of <laughs> well, I, I hope you're going to make up for it this evening with dinner and afterwards. <laughs> so, so Robert, Roberto, we've, we've just deposed um, Renato of, of everything that, 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 uh, that your students and, and you had done in the research. And um, we're just, um, we agree that, that Sending sending students out into the world and having them formulate formulate the, the proposal for uh, for a design to diagnose the situation and prepare some some potential um, and I, I don't think it's solutions that you guys are but 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 to actually to, to to make positive contributions yeah we think it's a it's a good thing and I was just saying before you sat down that we um you know Garrett and I. When we take our students out in Los Angeles, it seems it's, you know, it's um, they're not so excited to be outside in the world. They 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 prefer to be indoors. And I this is a, also pre-COVID. Has nothing to do with. So maybe we should maybe we should do this, Gary. Just send them out for two weeks. Yeah, the <laughs> the pre-architecture part, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. So. Are you going to be running a similar um, uh, experiment again? We are always finding ways to work together, Roberto and I, in these areas. And, and we've done it in a very, in a variety of uh, frameworks. Um, doing research, doing sort of consultancy through the university with local governments and things of the sort, doing teaching and thesis. So we did thesis before, before this. Okay. Uh, two years before for the for the masters, uh, but we don't have anything so concrete at the moment. But we're sure it will come. So do you? It's, do you... I, I think it is 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 a very interesting time here in Chile. I think in the world, but in Chile because of the, the social unrest and the, now the process we are discussing a new constitution. And um, I don't know if you knew, but um, this weekend we had elections, uh, presidential elections, and the front runners are extremist left and extremist right. Uh, and everybody is, is quite impressed because the third guy, he, he's still living in the US. He never was here. He was doing. Um, his campaign just remote campaigning Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> Facebook is, a, is the first fake 100 famous face Facebook uh, campaign very populist very populist uh, and I think that is weird politically but at the same time we are living in a period where everybody is understand that we are changing the country you know it's a it's a it's a complete transformational Period, and I think mm. that, uh, um, architects, urbanists are. We are really trying to connect this political process with cities, with, because yeah. it's, it's, I think it's the first time when more people, most people, really understand that the, the quality of life in cities is very connected with the, with the, all these social interests, and our students are very interested. I think it's is. Um, is, is something that is very different to five, 10 years ago, where it was very difficult to convince the students that they mm. should be a political agent, you know, because it's, it's, especially in the School of Architecture, it's very easy to be interested in, in the object of architecture, and especially here, because we are very good at School of Architecture. Um, and everybody wants to be, well, a lot of people, they want to be famous. And, but now is is um, I think is a, a very liquid uh, period, but at the same time exciting. And I think that our work in resilience, in resilience and, and, and risk management is um, is taking a lot more attention than they used to be. But the, uh, then, 
I think this, I have a question related to this specifically, which is, you know, whether we're teaching design studio, yeah, a topic, uh, you know, at UCLA, we have topic studios, right? You kind of develop a thesis and that could be anything from a, a fire management <laughs> kind of proposal to uh, something disciplinary or aesthetic, right? The full, the full range of available options, uh, but no matter, which realm you might find yourself in proposing a sort of thesis behind a brief and behind a studio. I think the the goal is always that you find something out of that, some kernel uh, that can match, pair with the real, right? Pair with the, the real world. And so I think uh, Roberto re related to that question, I'm curious what kernels came out of the research that may or may not pair with these the current climate you're describing do you see uh, do you see paths forward for you know particular projects or particular areas of research that can seamlessly let's say th thread into you know into reality or do you see uh, do you see other parts that are five ten years away from being able to uh, you know go into practice um, yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm not sure if uh, Renato is agree with me, but I think it's some, something, yes, something <laughs> like solutions, uh, um, nature-based solutions mm. is something that um, was very academic a few years ago, mm. but now you can feel it in the people and the students that is, that is something we need to do. You know, is that how the design should be more related with natural solutions is not something hypothetical or the topic anymore. You know, it's, it's very it's interesting, right? And, and it's very interesting because it's design is, I think as an architect, we need to, to, to have a, 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 a major or more complex comprehension of the, of the word design, you know, because it's very easy in the School of Architecture yeah. to understand that design is the is the drawing, <laughs> and and but I think is when you think about this is 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 how the the how you are thinking and re, or rethinking environment and landscape and how is a is a is a is a design but it's a more comprehensive design and and, and because of that we need to talk with other professionals and I, I think that is a, a second thing that is connected that is a how we need a more transdisciplinary perspective how 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 we need to 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 practice that interdisciplinary work i think that is something becoming more and more real the other thing is is uh, especially because of the discussion in the, the, the political programs for the president for the president is the role of territory you know territory is something that here it was very abstract few years ago, very abstract. You know, what is territory? You can talk about regions, uh, municipalities, but territories. But now you can understand that is territory is something that you can talk a lot with communities. But it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a more multidimensional thing. It's not just soil. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's, it's becoming something what is people, um, environment, identity, you know, and, and how territory is a way to um, to talk about different kind of communities. That is another very spring, is a very strong thing. Other is uh, uh, worries about water. You, water is, and I don't know if you know, but here water in Chile is private. Is is you know is uh, is, is is very expensive and is um and. And, and now there's a lot of discussion about the kind of nationalization of water. And that means that you need to rethink the cycle of water in, in different ways. And, and again, it's something where design is very important, the way how you can manage water, not just uh, you, can, you can think in the, in the water, the, the way how you can avoid um, floods or is how you can really rethink cities, uh, uh, thinking in water. And, and mm. finally, 
I think another very abstract concept that is it used to be something very far for everybody is is a circular economy. Circular economy it was something that just uh, very weird people was talking three years ago, and now it's something that is everybody is talking. Of, of course, we, it's, I think that we don't we don't have the solution, uh, uh, but at least it's something you can talk about with everybody now. And I think it is. It, there, I think that that kind of topics should be a lot more important in in the education. And I think as, a, as an architect, we should be in the front line of that, not just waiting for for excited or or very sexy project that uh, some some somebody with a lot of money is asking for for that. Yeah, I think it is how we can be involved in the origins of these problems. I think that is something. I think if we can really connect with with you with other people working in, in, around the world because it's. It finally something that is, um, it, it would, it, uh, uh, yesterday uh, I heard, if you want to save the country, you need to save the world. And, and, and I think that is, 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 is one of the things that we can connect with different places. Roberto and Renato, Fantastic. Uh, who, uh, who'd be interested to, to know who you invited to, to talk with the students along the way in the, in the kind of, Transdisciplinary mode. Did you and who did you invite? Before, before, or, no, in the, in the studio. Ah, in the studio. Yes, we we had been connected with a uh, with a uh, um, local uh, uh, office official officials officers officials uh, officials um, uh, because is one of the the, the things of this uh, project in different parts, as is uh, the the river, the Mamboch, the, the Manipo River, and the and the and the San Pedro, another river, is crossing different municipalities, and and these municipalities are working mainly for inside. I mean, they are not really thinking in the in the in the in the uh, in a more associative way. I think one of the things that is for follow for next uh, project is now the regional government. That is another exciting thing. The mm -hmm. regional government is for the first time is, is, is this year we are implementing the first democratic elected governor, regional governors, and they are they are reorganizing the way how we are rethinking uh, and managing the regions, and they will be in the next following month, they will be doing the, the new regional strategy, the new uh, regulatory plan, the, 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 uh, and, and different plans. And I think is in this um, context, our project uh, is one of the way how the river is one of the way to, to, to look this, to look for this um, association, this associative way to rethink the territory. And I think that is uh, is something where we can connect these um, municipal officials with um, regional officials, where it's something that is not happening in the past. Right. Uh, it's something that is starting to happen. And, and are the students, in, um, let's say, within the university, are they are they interacting with geographers or sociologists or or? Le Law, you know, law professors. Is that is that something that's happening? Yeah, it, 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 uh, normally our school of architecture is not very uh, crossed, I think, for yeah. with these other disciplines. But our work, um, our research work, is uh, is um, with um, we have geographers, different kind of engineers, and sociologists. Um, when I say different kind of engineers, we have engineers in natural resources, engineers in forests, engineers in computing, because one of the things that we are working um, in our research is how we can use technology in this process. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and that is the only way 
to do it if we're talking with other uh, disciplines. Yeah, but that's to, to be clear. The, the, there is less contact, even though this is a complex university and we have several fields and so forth. Sure. We live more isolated in our field of architecture, even if we do have joint appointments of people dealing with, for instance, water, an engineer, a Spanish engineer came over and had a position here. In, at the School in, of Architecture. At the School of Architecture and at the School of Engineering. And we, we try to do this, but it's less, you know, less common. We, right. We, this is something we have to do on purpose. Yeah, but that is why when you have a research with funding, with real funding, you can do it. Yeah. Through research, because you can do organize things. And that is a is a is a good opportunity for, for us. Um, you mentioned the word associative. I was thinking of 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 uh, practices like Allison and Peter Smithson, who would probably use a similar term and who would have an idea about about the world similar to yours. That was a generation that would get in their car and actually drive through the countryside and and, and take a look out outside of the city. Team Ten, the uh, the structuralists, people going to Africa, understanding. Uh, uh, social orders that were non-European, like really kind of rethinking the monologic, let's say, uh, uh, um, a posture of modernism towards something dialogical, which I feel is something that you're doing is a sort of a dialogical uh, practice, an immersive practice that's really based on ex on on live exchange, uh, rather than, you know, keeping things at at a at a, at a disciplinary distance. And there have been sort of cycles of this um, in and out of, let's say, uh, Western, North American and South American academe, right? I think it's sort of uh, formalisms come and go, not, you know, informalisms come and go, but it seems right now that, the, that what brings us here is the undeniable fragility of things, is that it is no longer a fringe thing to say the world's on fire. We have, we, you know, we have a role to play in this. We're part of the problem. And so it seems more than ever that the way to tackle this is to actually get people out, out in the world and actually being in a dialogical mode. And that, 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 um, you know, this, the scientific, um, kind of lab, uh, uh, condition of accepting that nine out of 10 things you're gonna do are failures, but you just gotta keep trying is, a, is it seems like the way to go as opposed to, you know, architects always thinking that they're gonna perfect it at a distance without getting contaminated by, by the world. So it's a, it's, a, it's a messy, it's a wonderfully messy practice. I think that your students got involved in. Not, not a very, uh, uh, pseudo lab condition. Well, we tried to organize it the best we could, but as I said before, the main strategy was to throw them outside and yeah, yeah. somehow yeah. handle whatever they found and we tried to have them too. Well, we, we'd love to have you guys up here and we'd love to come and visit you once all of this stuff eases. Um, when, is, when is your... Um, when do you think the dust will settle on your election? Um, there's, <laughs> it depends on the results, but <laughs> there's four more weeks to go for the second round. <laughs> and then we will have an elected president and uh, we'll see. Um, I, I think at the moment there's this uncertainty that exaggerates a bit the perception that we have. We are right in the middle of it. So we are sort of freaking out a bit. But in the end, I don't think it won't be so bad either way. Somehow we'll work it out. Somehow you'll or persist. Finishing. You'll demonstrate the resilience. Yes, very much, very much. Actually, you know, I, was, I forgot to tell you that we did this little pavilion in, in this Biennale in Favara in Sicilia last uh, year. No, Sorry, I can't, Renato, can you get closer to the mic? I'm not hearing oh, you. I'm sorry. Can you hear me here? That, yeah, better. Okay, so this is the mic. So, when it's, oops. Something about the, you said something about, about oh, the Biennale? Okay. 
Yeah. Sí, sí. Okay, yeah, no, what I was saying is that we have this little pavilion in this Biennale. It's a very off mainstream Biennale in Favada called A Thousand Cities, I think. And then what we tried to discuss there was actually this sort of parallel um, resilient path of the uh, politics and the sort of nature hazards, natural hazards, you know. It, it was quite a welcome at the Biennale. It's a small town again, but it was quite serious, the whole thing, you know. We were very impressed to, to see it. It's because Favara is a sort of a small town by Agrigento, which is actually best known by its Greek sites. And it's a very rundown city, as there are many in Italy. You probably have visited them, you know, that you are sort of impressed and see, you know, how, how, how is it so in this sort of wonderful country. But then they do very interesting things in, in this sort of collective. So maybe we'll send you a couple of links for you to check that out. And maybe you can tell them a little bit about our partners in Naples. Because they are, yeah, they are, they, we have a very, very good uh, work, very good connection with them. It, yeah. Well, no, it's a, there's this thing called the Plinius Institute. Institute. How do you spell it? Yes, P L I N I U uh, B. A V. It's not a U, it's a V S. So it's Plinius, like the historian who. Right. Pliny. Mm -hmm the eruption of the volcano and the collapse of, um, well, anyway, so the thing is that they have this in, in within the University of Federico II in Naples, they have this research institute that is more, it's called hydrogeological engineering, mm. but then it's led by an architect, these things uh. that happen in Italy. Uh. And then, um, and then they, they are very, fun of the engineering sort of uh, line of work but then they need partners in architecture and the, so mm -hmm. they found that we were an interesting partner and we we're trying to collaborate and we we have never really hit a nail to actually make a big thing yeah. a big project or yeah we have fun. been doing a lot of small things <laughs> and applying but, for big yeah. uh, grants <laughs> but the, the relationship is very good that's and, wonderful and, and i think it's uh, talking about our problems, <laughs> one of the main problems of our country exactly. is the connection with the, 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 the state and the indigenous um, territories. And in the south is a big area where now is with a lot of terrorism. You know, uh, this is one of the key things for the election, presidential elections. Um, it's very complex, but at, at, the same time, at the same time, they don't have a real... Um, uh, vision for the territory, and in one of the most important towns, it's called Villarica and Pucón, is a very important town in the south. They are in front of the huge volcano, and, and is a is the most active volcano in Chile. Yeah, and and is and um, and I think we have been trying to 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 think a, a real project connecting communities, local government. And, and how we can work together um, this uh, volcano here and, and, and the experience they have in, in, in Naples. I think it's, that is one of the examples of things that we are talking about. Um, but we are, talking about with, we are talking with different territories. Uh, in the north, in the desert of uh, the Atacama Desert, um, in the south, in the Magallanes, in, in Cape Horn, right. Cape Horn, Cape Horn, and now we are trying to work with the, the Cape Horn municipality, and I think is um, maybe in the future we can have a chat showing the different places we are working because we don't have a, just one place. I think we have conversations <laughs> with different territories, and uh, and sometimes we have more. Uh, money to work in some areas, but at the same time, we maintain this connection. And with, with uh, Renato, we have been talking, with, we have been working in two different cities in the Maule area, which is the same area that was attacked by the earthquake of 2010. And I think it has been very interesting to see how these small towns have been dealing with the reconstruction process for 10 years. 
Um, yeah, coming to sort of maybe concrete activities, we have a um, sort of an online symposium with Plinius by mid January. So if you find it appropriate, I could ask them and see if we could maybe invite some some of you to. Oh, we would love to. The ER three initiative. Yes, you know, please. This Very good idea. So as yeah. a whole pack, because um, they are, as I said, very proactive and quite interested. And so that would keep us in touch so that we continue to, to share, you know, and, and share our networks too. Um, and then we'll maybe prepare something for next, starting March next year, next academic year for, for you to come or for us to come. Would love to. Yeah. It's been a pleasure to reconnect and, and thank you so much for sharing the, you know, the summaries and the insights. We really appreciate it. And we thank do look you. forward thank to you seeing for, you. for your patience and for well, you're, you're your so goals. welcome. It's a pleasure to, to reconnect uh, and, and, uh, and hopefully we do get to meet uh, at least in Tokyo somehow. Well, we'll see. Why not? Yeah. When is that? Probably there's going to be planes in the future again. Yeah. When, when, when are you going to Tokyo? April, do you April, have? April, April is a tentative date, depending on how the COVID thing goes. April, April 22. 22, yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Okay, I'll we have it. time. All right. We have time. Okay, let us know. Well, happy the summer, happy summer or happy end of year or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, we're coming <laughs> into the summer. Okay. We're looking forward. Wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Renato. Good to talk Roberto. to you. Thank you Thank both. You, Garrett. Bye, Gareth. Bye, Gareth. Bye, CS. Bye, Carlo.